When the pH is 7, then it's a case where the sample is neither acids nor base. But less than 7, it's an acid, we say. More than 7, it's a base all the way. Quickly, I want to go over, again over the concept of melting and boiling points. So, melting and boiling points, the idea behind those is just how much energy you have to put in to break the bonds within the actual between, so it's usually the intermolecular bonds, so between molecules. How much energy you have to put in to break those bonds? That's what we call our melting and boiling point. So energy required to break bonds, energy required to break bonds. Now there's different substances which might be gaseous at room temperature and other substances which might be liquid or even solid. And that's obviously a different amount of, so their strength of a gas, which is room temperature, strength of their bonds will be weaker than the ones which are solid or liquid. That's the idea with behind melting and boiling points. Now we have here, we have a graph, and what we have here on the top side is temperature. So this is, might be their boiling point. Temperature the boiling point. And on this side, so on the x-axis, we have the number of carbons. So number of carbons. So it's one, one, two carbons, three carbons, four carbons, five carbons, six carbons, seven and eight carbons. So this is the number of carbons. And what we're looking at is we're looking at the actual boiling points of different alkanes, alkenes, alkanoles, and alkanoic acids and comparing them. And what we can see is first of all that the lowest boiling and melting, or in this case the boiling points. Those boiling points are from alkanes and alkenes. Now that makes sense because the actual structure is like so for alkenes and like so for alkanes. You can see it has only has hydrogen carbons for both the alkenes and the alkanes. Now that means we only have dispersion forces. Dispersion forces happen between pretty much any molecule. They're very weak, so dispersion forces are very weak. So these have very weak forces which means their actual boiling point will be a lot easier, a lot easier, a lot lower, because we can actually break those forces quite easily. Now, there is a bit of a difference when it comes to the other two. So you can see alkanol has a higher boiling point, and alkanoic acid has an even higher boiling point. So we've got the highest boiling point is your alkanoic acid, and your alkanol, alkanols have a higher boiling point than the other two, lower than alkanoic acid. And what we're going to do in this video is we're going to kind of cover why exactly that is. Why do these have different boiling points? Because the dot point itself says, explain the difference in melting point and boiling point caused by straight-chained alkanoic acid and straight-chained primary alkanol structures. So we don't really need to remember these alkenes and alkanes for this dot point, but you should know that they're going to be actually gaseous in many cases because they have a very low boiling point because they don't have any, any anything but these weak forces interacting, holding them together, whereas the other ones obviously have something else happening too. And that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. So first of all, let's look at the alkanol group. The alkanol group, we've got, in this case we have one here, so this might be two ethanols. This is an ethanol, and this here is an ethanol. We've got two ethanol groups, and what you can see, they would have, they have a special type of bond, which happens between the OH group here, more specifically the hydrogen of this ethanol and the oxygen of the other ethanol. And remember we said earlier, one, the hydrogens are generally positively charged and the oxygens are generally negatively charged. And this will cause a bond to be formed. There's a positive and negative attraction and we call this the hydrogen bond because we have a hydrogen being one of the positive ones and the negative is in this case oxygen. And between oxygen and hydrogen, we have a hydrogen bond being formed. And these are still relatively weak. They're not as strong as covalent or ionic bonds, but they're stronger than just dispersion forces. Just stronger than dispersion forces. We said dispersion forces were the ones which these have. Alkenes and alkanes only have dispersion forces. Whereas there are also dispersion forces acting in alkanoles. But we have on top of that, we have these hydrogen bonds, which are quite a bit stronger. So here we've actually explained why the actual melting point for alkanols is higher than for alkenes or alkanes, because they have, on top of dispersion forces, they also have your hydrogen bonds. Right? So 
Spin difference in melting points and boiling points caused by straight-chained alkanols, that's due to their hydrogen bonds. And we generally have, because we have one, it's so an alkanol group, first to the OH group, and generally alkanol, your alkanols have one OH group, which means there's a possibility of one hydrogen bond. So one, one hydrogen bond. Now it's actually interesting to know that water itself has a lower boiling point and melting point than alkanols. If we were to look at water, then we would find that, for example, obviously water itself has a boiling point of about 100. So there are some alkanols and alkanoic acids which have a higher boiling point and melting point than water. Even though water can also form these hydrogen bonds, right? So you can form these hydrogen bonds. But why would water have a lower boiling and melting point than alkanols, especially as you increase the size of the length itself? So let's imagine this were here our alkanol groups. So this might be one here, let's say this is one, two, three, four, five, six, six carbon. This is hex, hexanol, and we have another hexanol. Now you could obviously, you could have, this is your functional group. So we said that these were the hydroxide groups. So you might have your hydrogen bonding happening in between these two. You have your hydrogen bonding that gives it some added strength, but you also have dispersion forces. And the longer the chain, the more dispersion force. Dispersion force can happen between any atoms, so these hydrogen atoms will also have dispersion forces. And because there's more of them, you're going to have more of them connecting, which adds up to more, a higher boiling point, melting point. Whereas water only has H2O, there's not going to be that many, like a long chain of it. Therefore, it will have a lower boiling melting point than hexanol. As hexanol has hydrogen bonds plus a long chain, whereas water only has hydrogen bonds. So hexanol will have a higher boiling point in water. But the interesting part is alkanoic acid, we said earlier, the alkanoic acids have the highest boiling point, even higher than alkanols. Now why would that be? Well, in this case, we said the hydrogen bonds is quite a strong bond, not the strongest, but quite a strong bond. And we said that the alkanol group has one of it, right? So one of the hydroxide groups only has one hydroxide functional group, and that group can cause one hydrogen bond with another group of the opposite ethanol, for example. Now here we have, okay, this is our alkanoic acid. We have these R, which stands for the rest. So it could be, doesn't matter what length it is, we're not focusing on the carbons. These were the carbon chains. So R would be a long, long carbon chain, but we're not focusing on that. We're just focusing on the actual functional group, which is specifically this part. It has an O, OH. So one OH and then an O, right? So this would be from one. The blue would be from one alkanoic acid, and the red would be from a different alkanoic acid. So they're bonding together. And you can see those dashed lines, these ones here. This is your hydrogen bond. And what you might notice is you've got one here and you've got another one here. So you actually have two hydrogen bonds being formed between your alkanoic acids. And that's enough to make it, give it, increase its boiling point to more than that of alkanol. Which is why alkanoic acid has a higher boiling point than alkanols just because of those two hydrogen bondings that occur on the alkanoic acid when they join together compared to one for the alkanol. Right? The rest, so the dispersion forces, because that same structure, the rest group would be same for alkanols and alkanoic acids, there'd be no difference. But the difference would be, yeah, the actual function group. Two for hydrogen bonds for alkanoic acid, one for alkanol. I'll go over the actual dot point again. Explain the difference in melting and boiling points caused by straight chain alkanoic acids and straight chain primary alkanoic structures. So in both cases, let's say they have the both the same amount now amount of carbons, they have dispersion forces acting, which gives them a pretty high boiling point. But the difference between the alkanol and alkanoic acid is not the length of their chain, but the functional group. If we have the alkanol function group, that's an OH group, and that allows the alkanols to form exactly one hydrogen bond, which increases the boiling point to a degree, because hydrogen bonds are strong, we need more energy to break those bonds. Whereas with the alkanoic acid, because they have the possibility of forming two hydrogen bonds, that will increase the amount of energy required by even a bit more, which is why overall, the alkanoic acids have a higher boiling point than the equivalent alkanol. And that shows by this graph, right? If you have five carbons, you can see our alkanoic acid is here, and alkanol is here. The boiling point is slightly lower for alkanol than for the equivalent size chain alkanoic acid. That's because these form two hydrogen bonds, and the alkanol only forms one. 
and we said that the alkenes and alkanes, they form none, which means their boiling point and melting point will be lower. We hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.